Ready on the lights, on the action, on the camera! You forgot the fan in the chamber! Meanwhile, behind the facade of this innocent-looking bookstore... Superstition, fear, and jealousy. Look, I know the supernatural is something that isn't supposed to happen, but it does happen. Who is this irresistible creature who has an insatiable love for the dead?
killing the music, and <laughs> everybody's bringing up character sheets to get ready to rock. Yes. And roll. <laughs> I rock, <laughs> and I roll all day, sweet Susie. Hey, K- Kaylin. Uh, so, yeah, that was a quote from a, I think, a probably a forgotten movie now at this point, uh, uh, Kung Pao Enter the Fist. Uh, oh my gosh. Love that movie. Call me Betty. Betty. <laughs> I am an all powerful magician. Your shirt is blue. Now it is green. <laughs> now it is red. Chicken go cluck cluck. <laughs> go, 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 go. <laughs> oh god, I could go off on that movie. Um, it's even better if you watch it uh, without the dubs. Uh, uh, cause he's, um, to make it look like it's bad dubbing on his part, he's actually saying random lines, uh, during, <laughs> during that time frame. So it's even, it, it's, it's just as good, even though it's, you know, completely bizarre. But anyways, so backing, uh, back in the game and hello to Rachel, uh, who we noticed is, uh, on the stream, uh, from our vampire game. Hola. Hey. <clears throat> uh, so a good quick... Job last night. <laughs> Yeah, I you mean, you painted the interior of that truck die. real good. Yes, you did. <laughs> <laughs> Our favorite color, red. <laughs> yeah. Did uh, the wolf have to help you out? I I don't know how busy Harvey Keitel is this time of year. Oh yeah, no, uh, not as of yet. Um, so they they didn't have to call on the wolf. Yeah, we kicked ass. What? what um, wolf is oh, it's a uh Pulp Fiction Pulp reference. Fiction. Yeah. Oh. Harvey Keitel plays a, a shady character cleaner yeah. type guy Called who comes who comes in and fixes bad you know crime scenes. I mean, we could we could definitely use one of those. Yeah, <laughs> maybe somebody who has a lot of money should invest in that. A, a fixer. You need to gotcha. Get one that actually works for the police or FBI or whatever. You know, get one of their cleaners as a ghoul. Well, oddly enough, you had one, if you remember, when the game first started. I remember. Yep, that was Olivia. We don't have her anymore. No. <clears throat> so, at any rate, uh, back to this game. So, as a quick recap, um, as my cat is <clears throat> digging into my chair. It looks you have a, like you have a weird like ponytail. Yeah. <laughs> at one point in time. Uh, so the group has managed to, uh, join forces at this point with the Aegis Foundation, uh, and they have been freed from their cells, and the, uh, issues have kind of been cleared up temporarily, as they are now going to be discussing, uh, strategy at this point to hopefully retake and stop the crisis that is currently in Fairside. Yep. Where are we, like, now as far as location? Oh, and um, even though Derek couldn't join us, Ixion is with you guys. So, obviously, I'm not going to have him for, like, all the dialogue. But if you guys need him to do something, like, in combat or whatnot, I will uh, control him and make sure he can do something. Uh, For the time being, right now, you guys are waiting for the green light or what is, you know, what's the expectation going forward you're kind of been posted up in that uh, that um, other office area that didn't really have anything in it that you guys had talked to uh, your lawyer, yeah, uh, Stephen P. New. Yep. Uh, and what they did is they've put some they've put some fold out chairs in there for you guys if you need to sit down or anything. It's I mean it's all temporary. It's nothing glamorous or whatnot, but it will make do. Uh, what you can tell from the, the, the news is, and it's only maybe an hour from, the, from where we last left off, but um, the news so far uh, in the media has been um, really blowing this, you know, all, I mean, it still is out of proportion, but really kind of playing up on the, uh, the people being, you know, carted away from the, the, the scene uh, the issues that are going on inside. Um, one uh, media, uh, one person from the media attempted to follow the uh, trucks 
uh, that were, um, you know, basically carting the, uh, the some of the people out of uh, out of the city, uh, and they were detained and basically sent elsewhere uh, and released, sort of thing. So, uh, and when of course the media, you know, um, the media spokesperson made a big deal about the fact that the media was detained and that you know, freedom of press and whatnot and. Uh, uh, the, per, the basically the 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 security team that detained him, which was the Aegis Foundation, you know, flat out said, yep, "Sure, okay, fine, yeah, freedom of press." Basically, told him, "You know, uh, freedom of press, sure, uh, but the people being carted away have a freedom of privacy, and you're not going to exploit them, and we're going to make sure that that uh, wherever they're taken to, they have the privacy that they need." Sort of thing. So they, it, they're trying to keep it as humane as possible, but keep eyes off. Uh, which is still a little bit easier to do in this this age that doesn't uh, everybody have cell phones and posting up to social media platforms and whatnot. So, um, outside of that, uh, you have seen uh, some more trucks come in um, that have got you know additional food and supplies. So, in the interim, you guys have been helping some of the team um, shuttle some of it inside and, and just get it set up in in like an orderly fashion. So as people come in. Uh, you know, they can get like a, a quick meal, a drink, you know, if they need like a, a, a new shirt or potentially some, you know, new shoes or like just some quick odds and ends. There's there's nothing too robust about it. Uh, most of it's all like hand-me-downs or whatnot, but it, it's just a, a quick humanitarian effort to try and get them, a, a, you know, make sure that they are okay, that they don't need any additional medical assistance and to essentially get them the hell out of here. Um, so outside of that, did you did anybody have anything that they were wanting to do in this time frame? Anything they want to discuss, research, or whatever? Uh, while you are kind of waiting for uh, an update. No. Okay. Uh, did they eventually bring us back lunch? Yes. Yeah, he's just gonna eat lunch. <laughs> Is he still feeling out of it from the uh, teleportation? No. Okay. No. I, I, since it's been over an hour at this point, the uh, anti-nausea medication that you took is, is already taken effect, so you're, you're good. Okay. And it doesn't have any trackers in it, right? <laughs> <laughs> Not as if your body could tell. <laughs> you find three trackers in it. No. You're like, oh, I've got an upset stomach. Must be one of them trackers. Ooh. <laughs> that ain't no Pepto-Bismol. Well, in the 90s, that would be an appropriate way to do it. Yeah. Well, yeah. at least for about 24 to 48 hours. Then after that, it's it's not going to be tracking accurately. Nope. It's going to be stationary. <laughs> <clears throat> Everyone smiled. I'm a-okay with the results from that joke. You, you you can't you ultimately can't avoid the poop jokes. That's eventually going to happen at some point, right? Yep. <clears throat> yep. So, but nobody doing anything else in particular. Um, I guess I'm just going to be watching the logistics going on, um, with great in great detail. Because I'm getting the idea that I may have misjudged this group. Okay. Um, I'm just so, looking around in so, general because... Okay. Sorry. Go, yeah, go ahead. Sure, sure. Okay, so then so you guys are uh, trying to take a closer look at the operation, which nobody is is stopping you or preventing you from doing. You see, that right now they've got two main functions, and there are a sizable group of people here um, at this point, easily 40 to 50 people, uh, in two different tents that have medical concerns that prevented them from from leaving, <clears throat> um, and you can see that there are a couple. And unfortunately, they're kind of short staffed for uh, doctors, but they do have some doctors going, you know, making rounds as, as quickly as possible, diagnosing or diagnosing the uh, individuals, uh, trying to find out what they are. And it's it's random. Uh, a bunch of it is obvious malnutrition uh, over an extended period of time. You know, due to the impoverished nature of the area, um, others are, um, have like disabilities, uh, such as like a lacking of a wheelchair, 
um, you know, mobility issues that uh, prevent them from, you know, getting up and going right away. So they have to take extra, you know, precautions. Um, uh, the bulk of them, however, have a specific uh, medication needs, uh, which you can tell uh, based on like some dry erase boards where they're kind of keeping like quick up to date, um, nothing um, denoting individuals, but like making quick updates as they go of like medications that they're going to need more of, um, you know, hours that people are checking in and out to you know make sure that you know so in, you know individuals are, are attended to and whatnot but you know there's several individuals in here that you know have um like diabetes medications that are, are needed or blood pressure medications that need to be maintained um you know or and or heart conditions so they don't feel comfortable you know packing them up and shipping them off to someplace else you know when they um when they have extended medical issues of this nature so those are the ones that are actually still on site uh, that they are actively taking care of as best as possible. Most of the ones that are coming in and out are the ones that are that are well enough uh, up to maybe cold or flu-like symptoms that they're okay with you know making sure they've got something to eat, they've got some water if they need like an extra jacket or a shirt or something. You know they they get them with that. They get them on a vehicle and they get them out. So they're being taken from uh from the neighborhood to outside yes do we know where they're going uh you can if you want to try and uh overhear uh like what they're they're you know they're doing i mean because the operation's kind of loud you know as trucks are coming in and whatnot so it's not like people can just go oh, you know whisper they have to like call it out to you know get the directions and and whatnot to go in yeah sure i'll try um Overhearing, see if okay. I have anything to boost that. Looks like I don't. Okay, intuition. Um, nine. Ooh. Nine also stands for no, <laughs> uh, which is very appropriate. <laughs> Might need some backup dice. <laughs> need one of these. <laughs> Yeah, there, there are always the uh, Discord rolling dice. That's yeah, true, that but that's that's burned me before as well. Yeah, I like my hundred sided dice. Let's see. I knew I had forgotten to do something before the game started. What was that? Get your dice. Sort out my dice and figure out what roll, what order they're rolling in tonight. Oh, uh, gotcha. I actually got smart and separated all my D10s and it's in their own little bag. I like to use a specific set for each game, kind of. Like, yeah. I'm so kind of I like that, yeah. keep them separated in like, sets. That's fair. Except for like D&D where they, I require multiple of one kind yeah yeah no it makes sense i mean maybe that's a bad system maybe that's what's going wrong yeah i mean according to the rules of probability you don't need to do any of that and you know <laughs> realistically <laughs> eh, whatever. okay well i guess i could i could ask somebody you sure can um so i guess as we're taking a look around um I'll just uh, be really casual and pull somebody aside as who looks like they're sort of in charge of moving people out. Okay. And I'll ask um, where everyone's going. Okay. Uh, so he kind of like look. It happens to be like a you know one of the um, uh, agents from uh, Shield or Shield from one of the agents from the Aegis Foundation. Um, <clears throat> so they're in their, their typical, uh, you know, uniform and whatnot. Uh, and he says, uh, I'm sorry, ma'am. I'm not exactly at liberty to say, uh, outside of the fact that they are being taken to a safe location, uh, away from, uh, Fairside for the time being for, uh, safety purposes. How long will they stay there? I don't know. Uh, you may want to talk to Mr. Danvers about that. 
Fair enough. I'll go back. Okay. And in the meantime, um, you can also see uh, American Century uh, as well as Battle Him Bell um, also helping out. Um, but what they are specifically doing are uh, they are going with the transports. Like Some, acting as escorts? Mm -hmm. as. Yep. Okay. So they, they are um, uh, either they are going with trucks that leave with people um, or you'll see them uh, occasionally come in and watch over uh, shipments that are flagged, you know, that clearly have like the Red Cross label on them. Um, do we know if they're treating, um, deviants differently than everyone else? Great question. Um, you aren't, you haven't seen any sort of obvious segregation. It looks like everybody, it, it's like when at first glance on when you guys went into the tent, if they're sick, they're in there. If they need food, they're over there. Can we, can the, we only, tell that, the only type of segregation you might see is if they they have like some sort of like obvious disease, so it's a quarantine of some form. And that that's uh, actually pretty rare. You don't see many people that are in in that sort of thing. Can we tell that there are obviously deviants among? Oh, the oh yes, yes, yes. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, with some of the people, um, which was common of uh, Fairside. Uh, some of the people who were quote unquote obvious deviant uh, deviants were obvious for a reason. So they had like the physical, you know, maladies that came with you know being a deviant. So either they they clearly looked elvish or they looked inhuman of some kind, you know, or their you know their body misshapen to some degree or whatnot. All Not the Morlock. Yeah, basically, yeah. yeah, like like a Morlock, you know, in that sense, you know, they by human standards would could, probably could not pass as a human and you don't I'm, see any uh, sort of segregation of that nature it's just it's it's a matter of if they're sick they're over there if they need something you know they're over there you know that's really the only type of segregation you see okay can i uh find if there happen to be like any like particular uh, not just agents for ages, but like officers who are like giving orders or what have you. Like, are that any of those around? Yeah, I, okay. I mean, you guys have been here long enough. It's pretty easy, even though you know the Aegis Foundation doesn't have like a military ranking system that you would immediately recognize. You know, just like any other like foreign military. Like, okay, well that guy looks like he's got some extra ribbons. Okay, maybe he's you know important. You can denote them that way, but you may not necessarily know what the rank is. So, I mean, it's easy enough okay. along those lines. Okay. I can tell there, there's a hierarchy, yep. and this might be above that. Okay. Yep. So, yeah, I, I go to, you know, one of the higher-ups. Okay. Um, and I say, um, do you happen to have any information, or does Aegis Foundation have any information on Blackout and his activities in Fairside? We are currently sifting through that at this point in time, from from my understanding, sir. Uh, I think Minuteman is going to be uh, briefing you all on that. Uh, what we do know is that he was uh, attempting to press uh, many of the deviants in this area into press gangs, which is one of the reasons why we're trying to get them out of here. We don't have the time to vet them uh, to determine who is or is not on his side. The fewer individuals he has in his employ, the less power he'll have. Exactly. Understood. Thank you. I head back to the team. Okay. Is there any way that, well, I'm in awe of everything going on around, that I might overhear something? Uh, anything in particular you're hoping to overhear? Anything that might sound interesting. I don't have anything like in particular. Why don't you give me an intuition check? Okay. Sixty-two. Oh, nice. What's your intuition? Um, monstrous. Oh, 
Good grief. <laughs> With who? Yeah, so that's a safe and sturdy yellow result. Um, so you end up overhearing something about the uh, the uh, a drug called Dark. Okay. Uh, and it uh, uh, and it's actually been mentioned a couple of times, primarily coming over from the uh, the tent where they've got some of the uh, uh, the sick people. And you are quickly picking up on that a number of the people that are in there are coming off of withdrawals. And they're struggling to find a way to um, help them off of that. Okay. Do you communicate that to the rest of us? Yeah. I'm assuming, yeah, uh, like, at some point throughout the day or, or the time frame right now, like, you guys are kind of rummaging, you know, through the camp occasionally and then going back to the room that you guys have kind of got set up and maybe sharing or just talking or, or, or whatever and, you know, coordinating that way. Yeah, I'll head back to our room and, um, and tell them what I heard. Yeah, I'll, I'll share mine as well. I mean, we all... Who's all in, is there so is everybody in the room? Yeah, that, that's fine. Yeah, okay. So I was um, looking around and I came across one of the, I think it's the medical where they're keeping people in. Um, I heard them talk about a drug named Dark and that people are having a real hard time with withdrawals and they're struggling to get them off of the drug do you guys ever heard of that now uh out of character that was the uh the uh power booster right yeah 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 blackout and his minions are making dark is a power boosting drug that some of the the criminals and um gang folks have been using to boost their power sets Okay. So we believe that it um, has some connection with uh, with blackout, either his power or his uh, his um, DNA or something. Uh, I wonder if they could use our uh, expertise over there. They might. Maybe work on some kind of a chemical solution. If you think you're capable, I suggest you offer your services in that regard. It would, at the very least, it would help us understand it better. And with the Aegis Foundation's materials and resources, we might have better chances of coming up with some sort of withdrawal treatment or cure. Yeah. Um... More samples, right? Before we start running off, we should probably get debrief first after the incident earlier today. Mm. I do agree. Speaking of which, before they arrive, what was it that happened that ended up landing everyone here? A training accident is what happened. Yeah. I see. I have been uh, informed that they have uh, anti-teleportation technology here as well, that Hoplite seems to possess that, which is troubling and interesting at the same time. Uh, sure. That's, that's what happened. Yeah, it sure misses up things. Well, now we know of that danger that Hoplite and possibly other institutions have that technology, which is unfortunate, but perhaps we can find a way to be aware of it ahead of time in the future. I do apologize for sending you three on this errand on this mission. I didn't I believe would, that the danger would be that high. I probably would have done it regardless. So it's a training exercise. As yep. I'm pretty sure if Aegis did not recognize that it was simply a training accident, we would not be in the position that we are now. I I think they understand that (coughs) 
we can have further discussions about the situation <laughs> later. I I do I do think it's interesting that we've we've ended up working with them uh despite our best efforts. So perhaps this is the avenue that we need to take to affect the change that we want. Since our primary concern was about humanitarian aid post the lockdown, I think that this is not bad for us. It'll give us a chance to network with the likes of Bell um, and other heroes in the area. I concur. It was our initial thoughts on the matter. It seems that we will simply have to accept the good and the bad and have faith that the good will outweigh the bad, at least in the short term. But we'll just, we shall see. So there's a knock at the, uh, the door frame to the room. Come in. Uh, so one of the agents peeks around and he says, uh, boss man wants to see you guys in uh, five minutes or whenever you're ready. Where is he at? Uh, he's in uh, he's in the command room. Thank you. That's over blah blah blah, right? Affirmative. <laughs> I'm not going to make up things for your world. <laughs> as far as I know, it's on the fifth floor and it's heavily guarded. Or it could be on the ground floor where he can escape easier. <laughs> uh, well, sorry, sir. We only have a couple rooms in this particular building. <laughs> Um, he'll go ahead and get up and head that way. Okay. Yeah, in here. Yeah, I'll follow along. <clears throat> okay, yeah. so as you guys go walking in to the uh, converted command room uh, where they've got, you know, some screens set up and they've got a couple people oh. dialing in uh, and, you know, running communications and whatnot, he's got kind of a table set up uh, with some junk piled on it and, and various places looking very much like an old school kind of D and D map, uh, you know, to work like a layout for a uh, fair side. Uh, and Minuteman is, is standing there and just, you know, motions everybody to come on in. <clears throat> we finally says, signed. Yeah. Yeah. He says, all right, so do you want the good, do you want the uh, bad news or the worst news? Uh, yeah. Sounds like military answer to me. What's the worst news? Worst news, no help is coming. You mean from the government? Right. And the bad, and they've, the bad got, news? they've got their, their hands completely tied, and every, every additional avenue for assistance we have tried to tap is tapped. And the other news? <clears throat> This drug is worse than we thought. On top of that, before we started getting evac set up in here, he already had a nice little operation going on of getting uh, people under his control. Apparently, this dark drug, from what we can tell, makes people susceptible to him. I am so not surprised in it, the least. It was kind of a two-layer drug. We, we don't even know how exactly that is. But we it estimate is, that he's got at least 100 people under his, uh, under his control and his compound at this point. Innocence hooked on this drug. We were already doing some research into that. Um, it appears there is human or um, superpowered human DNA within the drug itself. Okay, well... Either Hoplite or Aegis can probably get a better genetic profile off of it. The meager equipment that our team has at our at our disposal was limited, to say the least. We were able to deduce that it was some type of human DNA. Okay, well, <clears throat> then uh, I should probably tell you that Hoplite is no longer working with us. Why is that? Uh, remember the whole court issue that I uh, uh, mentioned earlier on? <laughs> Well, the local government bodies, uh, be that as they may, are now no longer wanting to play ball in any degree. It hasn't hit the news just yet, but they're, uh, they've received some sort of orders that they're not, they're not going to be lending any sort of assistance. 
Mm. This is now just the Aegis Foundation. Right. Worse yet, uh, people that we have that are monitoring uh, local police band uh, are have leaked, and it sounds like they may be trying to make a move on Fairside here soon. What type of move exactly? Direct confrontation. Is that why you're evacuating so many? Uh, trying to. Uh, Where are they going? And if this stays within this room, we have reason to believe that there are... Well, let's not, let's not uh, uh, muddy the waters here. We think there are other agents at play. We don't know who or where. But they're attempting a trisk, or they're attempting a brisk uh, metahuman trade, which is one of the reasons why we're trying to get as many of these people out uh, and to non-disclosed safe locations as quickly as possible. They're trying to use the crisis to, in essence, funnel an SPB slave trade. Is Aegis more aware of Blackout's location or even one of his um, distribution <clears throat> labs? We know of the main one. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have much else to go off of because we have been in crisis mode and working to try and, and contain as best as possible. Um, so what we do know, uh, is, and he you know points to the map and makes reference to that that condominium complex uh the abandoned condominium complex that i had mentioned before he says so we do know this is a base of operations for him however we have it on strong authority this is not the only one this is just the obvious one that he uses to funnel most of his trade through regretfully we're probably going to have to fall into whatever trap he's got laid there beat enough heads and try to hopefully find clues as to where the, the real location is at. So we're going to have to kind of play his game for the time being. Do we, uh, is there enough people to arrest his folks or we shorthanded on that type of stuff? We are well? absolutely shorthanded on that. The hope is that we could, but there's no, we don't have enough inhibitor cups to slap on all the people who are, uh, all the deviants who are succumbed and under the control of this drug to keep them detained. And our cells won't hold that many. We wouldn't have to have a list of their lieutenants, would we? That we do have. And so he pulls out a printed piece of paper uh, and he says, <clears throat> from what we've been able to determine, uh, he's hired uh, some career criminals uh, onto his payroll. Uh, he shows you a picture of some uh, uh, of a really brutish. Basically, he just looks like a human, but with some extra tattoos and probably bulkier in size. Think kind of like the Hulk, but without the green skin uh, <laughs> and terrible haircut. He's got more like a '80s long hair band sort of haircut. Uh, he goes by the name of Brute. Uh, he's Blackout's right-hand man. He's going to be your straightforward tank. Punches hard, takes damage even harder. <clears throat> he says uh, he has a high-tech villain by the name of Coil on his side, uh, who, he was recently, who he's recently sprung. Uh, he has a bevy of high-tech gadgets at his disposal, primarily known for his... A uh, backpack with tendrils that come off of it, and shows a you know a picture of that. The interesting one of the group, uh, his name is Head or is uh, Intake, and he shows uh, a guy who could probably pass for uh, a headbanger in a sense, not um, not like long hair or whatnot, but got like the denim jean jacket and denim jean pants sort of thing not really a costume sort of look but probably that that 80s metal kind of guy um he says his power is hyper intake hence his name intake he can, he can intake uh 
inorganic and organic substance and convert it to energy. Impressive. He's the dangerous one. And awkward. So you'll want to watch yourself around him. Uh, he says, then we have the uh, uh, high-tech cybernetic individual by the name of Headbanger. And he shows a picture of a guy in like uh, a silver and black kind of uh, outfit with like long hair uh, that's black. He says uh, he specifically had his uh, head cybernetically enhanced so that his hair grows in his prehensile. So you're going to want to watch out for that. And he says, then we have the deviant uh, known uh, by the name of Clave. Uh, he says, um, known for his regenerative uh, healing capabilities, as well as his agility and uh, preternatural strength. Uh, he also uh, can generate claws from his hands. And it shows you a picture of, of what he looks like, this kind of bestial looking guy. Uh, can't pass for human whatsoever. He's got reddish, uh, kind of a, a ruddish looking skin with yellow eyes, dark color hair coming back. <clears throat> I'm not making the easy joke on that one. What was the uh, name of the second one you, you said? Intake. Coil? No, what, before intake. Coil. 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 Okay. Thank you. And we've also been able to determine uh, that the local hero, uh, Sledgehammer, it appears to have been taken hostage somehow. By this group? Correct. Do we know his location? We do not. But given the fact that uh, of his uh, the number of occasions he's personally confronted either the people of his employ or he's attempted to thwart Blackout himself, wherever he is, Blackout is not going to be far. Um, can I try to contact Sledge telepathically? Uh, sure, if you'd like to. Roll that psyche check. 71. Ooh. Nice. Um, remarkable. That puts you into a yellow result. Good job. Uh, you have already made that type of communication with him once before. So it's not totally unfamiliar. You kind of focus and reach out. And you... Pick up pain. Um, I'm going to say, Sledge, do you know where you are? And you hear him like, what, what the hell? Uh, are you in my mind, Lightbringer? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm late. Uh, yeah, welcome to the party. Um, I don't know exactly where I'm at, but wherever I am, it's below ground. Do you have any idea what part of town, or what part of Fairside you're at? N not offhand. Maybe I can control something from somebody when they come back around. All right, don't uh, don't take too many chances, but we're we're coming. All right. Um, I don't know if it helps, but I saw some high tech gear. Uh, I couldn't recognize it. Like equipment. Yeah, it's. I think it's somewhere near me because I occasionally hear something flick on and off. 
All right, we'll see if we can triangulate. I'll check in again. All right. Okay, I'll um, I'll relay this to the group and um, see if that helps us on a map at all. Okay. So you've got some brains here. Uh, some people want to give me some reason checks. I guess I could do that too. Mm. <laughs> All right, let's. Sorry, I did step away. The dogs were clawing up the carpet, and I had to to bring them in with me. So they'll stop doing that. Uh, in short, no, what fine. happened? He he doesn't know intimately where he's at, and we're trying he, to figure out. He said uh, he thinks he's near some high tech equipment. Um. We thought maybe we could look at the map and figure that out. Okay. I'm down for reason check. Okay. I got a hundred. Oh, damn. Dang. I got a nine. I got yeah. a six. I got a hundred with an amazing. I got 63 on uh, incredible. Okay. No, wait, no, wait. Amazing. Sorry. Reason, right? Mm hmm. Yeah. Amazing. Okay. Okay, so um, looking at a map uh, shown, uh, if he is if he's supposedly underground because that's that's what uh, she relayed. There's a couple of locations that he could uh, that he could still be. Um, it could be something uh, um, interconnected to uh, underground parking structures, which uh, there's five uh, that were still there. Um, as as you're unfamiliar with this area, you couldn't really say you know if, which one was good or not, but you can yeah. easily narrow it down to, uh, you know, if there's underground parking structures, then it's within these five areas. Okay, and I'll relay that to the group. Okay. And point uh, out as you think. as you are familiar with the area, Lightbringer. Um. Knowing that, and then knowing um, knowing the area well enough to know what areas suffer from uh, power outages or not, you can narrow it down to two. All right, I'll uh, I'll say um, I I'd say it's it's one of these two. So do we? I mean, he's. Uh, he's he's not doing great, but I know he can he can last probably a, a while. Do we know how long ago he was taken prisoner? Uh, uh, Minute Man says, uh, by estimates, um, it probably was around the time uh, of the lockdown. So it's been a, a couple of days. Uh, no, it's been about a week, week and a half. Well, that's not great, but uh, he seems to be holding holding his own. Um, how are I, we gonna? How are we I, gonna extract we him? Gonna this? Hoplite is no longer in the area. Did they take their technology with them? Oh no, Hoplite is still in the area. They're just not willing to assist. That's correct. Can we fabricate more of those cuffs? Not quick enough, no. How many do we have available? I can equip you with one apiece. So that, have to that, use would give you, that would give you five to use. Um, including blackout, there are six. Yeah. I was going to say the same. Well, keep in mind, were... if they're cybernetic, uh, if they're cybernetic related or technology, it's, that's going to be, it's, the inhibitor bands aren't going to work. Which, okay. which rules out headbanger and coil. And depending on how much they are still biological, there's still the option of sleeping on. Oh, that's true. Correct. I forget that you can do that. I wonder how much I could 
how much damage I could do if they were hit with electricity. Is there maybe a way I could short circuit them? Versus coil, that could be extremely effective. And probably versus Headbanger as well, if his primary power is cybernetic. Keep in mind, we're not trying to kill people. Are are we still going to be affected by this um, um, teleportation dampening? Yes, that's not us. That is top light. And if they haven't left, then their technology will still be in place. Rather teleportation will not be an option. Well, that kills that idea. Freddy. Yes. How confident are you in your flight capabilities right now? I'm confident. I'm back to where I was. All right. Uh, looking at the map, how far away are the two parking structures that we're looking at? Oh, um, within five miles. Okay. And then uh, of each other, are they like close to each other or are they? Uh, yeah, it's, it's a city. So you're probably within like a block and a half. Okay. The two locations I... are close enough together where we may be able to clandestinely check at least one, determine if that's location, and if not, try the other. We can check both. Um, <clears throat> so, here's an idea. How far apart are the two locations? Are they like a couple blocks away, or are they like right on top of each other? And within a block and a half of one another. So, here's the idea. And... Feel free to cut me off on this, Hyperion. I fly over the parking garages after Lightbringer uh, recontacts um, Sledgehammer. And all he has to do is tell us when it's the loudest. Hmm. Interesting. All right. Good work. Will you try that? It does work. That will more than likely alert any of them at the same time. And it might be just risk. enough to put them on their back foot. My suggestion was going to be it's because you can duplicate yourself. We could be checking out one while your duplicate's checking out another. True. That can be within approximately 3.2 kilometers or 2 miles approximately. Generating a copy. These copies of yours, uh, if they're damaged, they don't they don't uh, pull the damage back to you. Correct. It's not like a synaptic connection of that nature. I haven't developed them in that way quite yet. Uh, they are intangible, but I can see and communicate through them. Then perhaps that's probably going to be your safest bet to scout the areas. Uh, that way there, there's no risk, because we can't afford any of you going down at this point. Of course. So you can make two copies and send them in separate directions? I can make multiple copies and change their appearances with some effort. Yep, I agree. I think that's our best bet. That sounds good. And uh, that way we could find out what um, what we're going to be up against when we get there. Do you think it's plausible to make your copies look like one of them? If they're aware of where their lieutenants are located, having one or more copies of them elsewhere may draw suspicion. If I were to go into one of the tents, look at a random civilian, get a good enough look to copy their image, a civilian that may be around them may draw less attention. Yeah, agreed. 
All right. That sounds like a solid enough plan. So he points to the map, draws a circle around it. He says, I'm going to have some agents post up here as a secondary location. If something goes wrong, you can fall back to here temporarily uh, for assistance. Beyond that, we're not going to be able to reach you in time. So whatever you do, make sure that if you have to fall back here, it's to fall back all the way. This is just to provide you some cover fire or additional assistance as needed. If we uh, make some apprehensions, are we going to be able to bring them to you? If you are able to apprehend somebody and you can bring them back to this zone and you've got them uh, securely in an inhibitor band, my people will take care of them. But that means they're going to have they're going to have to pull back with you know with the paddy wagon for lack of a better term. But if you can do that and get and get to pre preferably uh, um, you know blackout, we can we can take it from there uh, and do what needs to be done. What about the innocents? Well, the addicts. Avoid them as as best you can. Incapacitate them as needed, but obviously we don't want any killing. I don't see any other help at this point, but we are on the clock. At any point in time, Hoplite can come uh, crashing through their barricades and make a mess of this whole thing, which is probably what they're going to do because their their uh, their training is for lockdown procedures, guarding prisons, not storming the gates. Right. Understood. They're, they're a hammer, not a scalpel. Right. Also, if you think that you can get secretively some uh, additional samples or preferably even the blueprints to these things, our R&D department could probably do something with that or at least connect with somebody to try and synthesize a, some sort of better cure. So that's obviously a secondary mission. If you can secure it, that's going to be vital to help these people. Understood. Any other questions? Uh, out of character, how far apart are these uh, possible locations for Sledgehammer is the um, distribution center or lab? Uh, like, the, are they pretty close or are they, like, no, uh, on the, the opposite sides? No, no, no. They're not quite the opposite sides, um, but the condominium sits more closer to the middle of Fairside, whereas okay. the, these two parking structures are more to the south. So there, right. there is some distance between them. <clears throat> are we Minute doing man. that first, or are we sending Mark out first? Let's get you Can to you have... let, let's get you to the secure zone first, so that way, when uh, Hyperion can uh, determine where it is you need to go, you can respond quickly without having to fly clear across town and and basically show your backside. Because he's got eyes and ears out watching everything right now. What I was going to suggest is when we go to to recover Sledgehammer, we have someone watching that building to make sure, and I'm not sure if you already have someone posted there, that Blackout or one of his lieutenants don't suddenly try to skip out on town or something like that. We've got, we do have eyes, uh, eyes on that building. Okay. My understanding is somebody among your group can generate some sort of uh, invisibility. That's correct. All right, so it's going to be inconvenient, but my suggestion is you go invisible on foot. We can do that. Yeah, I think the the noise I make when I fly around is pretty conspicuous. It is very conspicuous. If there's nothing else, uh, then uh, we'll meet you out front in five. Excellent.
So with that, uh, he goes and, uh, you know, he hollers for Warners at this point, uh, you know, to get her things and get ready. And he's making arrangements with uh, with other people. So, team, when it comes to interacting with the lieutenants and with Blackout, without having very much reconnaissance except for what we've just been told, it seems that our plan of attack, if we do interact with them and need to defeat them, would be first shown. If you're able to use your electrical manipulation abilities to stun or incapacitate either a coil and or headbanger, that would probably be uh, suitable there. With regard to intake, we cannot be close to him if he absorbs matter easily, which would mean that hitting him with range, such as with Lightbringer's beams uh, or with Angler's plasma, probably the, the best. The plasma he might be able to absorb. It's possible. It's if I hard can, to say I'm gonna the type of them, matter. If I can, I'm going to put them to sleep. Some Excellent. of the things that I can do is I can create static electricity. I can do lightning. I can direct a current like you would with a battery. Um, I can also alternate the current as in an overload or a startup. And if One you know, go ahead and keep playing. Then if you can control the current, do you believe that you would be able to simply turn off machines at range? Yeah, I think I could. That can be very useful with the uh, the the tech uh, villains. Correct. That's, that's what I was thinking. Since you guys don't want them killed, excellent. That would be the only thing I could do is just to manipulate the currents. Then deactivating them would be excellent. Yeah, Ready. Just turn them off. Or angler, how many individuals do you know of can you affect with your sleeping ability? I can do a widespread error area. Um, I'm not sure if I could put that whole condominium to sleep, but I do have a wide range with that. As long Although, as can... like, like what we saw with the um, the young lady a couple weeks ago, certain people do resist it. Correct. If so, oh, that is my primary concern with it is if one of these guys have something that inhibits their sleeping, that might cause a, a long term issue with it. Um, the only person I foresee a real issue with with my sleeping ability would be the headbanger since he has a mechanical head. Hmm. I don't know that if my sense. power affects brain waves or not. All I know is that it works most of the time. And for those with the cybernetic enhancements or the technological enhancements, the power nullifiers won't affect them. They will simply need to be incapacitated. It won't affect their technology. I think that's what Minuteman said. So if the technology is independent of the user or if they have a direct control over it, putting them to sleep should solve the problem with the case for Headbanger. If um, he's unable to be slept, we could probably do something like short-circuiting his brain, uh, the head for a bit, and that should put him down without killing him. Seems that we'll be using the winning formula we've been using before. We will start with your ability to see if it works. If it doesn't, and they are technological in nature as far as their threatening capabilities, then Shone will be able to, or at least attempt to, turn off their powers so that we can incapacitate them and bind them. Anyone else, we will need to take different approaches, such as with the one uh, intake. We won't be able to know what they can absorb. And at the same time, they may be able to absorb the power nullification collar if it's not activated fast enough. Hopefully that one can be knocked unconscious. 
that's the one I'm very concerned about. The technology folks, I'm strong enough to put most people on their asses without much difficulty. But um, the ability to absorb matter, that is a very, very difficult one to do. I might be able to put him to sleep through heat stroke. Unless he can absorb the the tent the air from the temp the uh, temperature from the air, Might but that's not that. a that doesn't sound like a description for his powers based off of what Minuteman gave us. Which might mean, as a last ditch effort, we'd be relying on Lightbringer's UV blasts to at least injure him to the degree where we can as attach a collar to him. Do we know what kind of energy he uses? That seems to be unclear. The way Minute Man made it sound is it's whatever energy he absorbs. So if he absorbs my plasma, my plasma blast, he might simply be able to, to take that in and discharge it back at us. Hmm. When Sorry, comes. pizza just arrived. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> what's what's your uh, preference? I'm a pepperoni person. Oh. That was my son. Nice and basic. Yeah. Can't yeah. can't go wrong with pepperoni. I like my Hawaiians. So also a good Mm -hmm. selection uh, my my thought is um, I have some control over radiation other than ultraviolet but I haven't used it very much so I'll have to give that some thought if, if I could somehow counter it or block it somehow understood same same thing goes for my plasma. I think I have it down, but I'm not sure if it's 100% yet. Okay. Excellent. All right, so, so you guys, is, are you guys well, good to go? So do we have a plan B if for some reason my abilities don't work on them? Uh, ring their bells. Click them. Click most. Um, knock people. Most people in the jaw, and they they go down like a sack of potatoes. Then we put the the collar on them and rip off any mechanical applications that they have. Okay. I agree. Yeah, I think I'm ready. Excellent. Let's head out. And I follow our. I follow the leader. Okay. I actually think that took like five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, so we're cloaking. So uh, you end up getting a. Um, well, at this point, uh, minute, minute minute man uh, warners. And four agents are going with you guys. Yeah. So uh, go ahead and make everybody invisible. While she's doing that, Minuteman, I'd like to make a, a telepathic connection with you just in case we get separated along the way. Sounds good. That was a 24. <laughs> Can I try again? Uh, yeah. Since he doesn't resist, it just kind of goes through, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. 73. Okay. okay. Uh, there you go. Uh, it was a little over. bigger than you anticipated, so you kind of had to focus, like, kind of like trying to make the trash bag fit, you know, over the trash can for the first time sort of thing. You know, you kind of got it most of the way, but you're like, oh, I got to adjust. Then it didn't, you know, it kind of cut off and you had to figure out how to stretch it. So you, you made it, you made it work. You're feeling good. 
you know, you, you you've got a, a sizable group at this point, so that that's kind of, that's encouraging. It's the first time you've done something like that. Uh, and with that, you guys start, you know, making your way. Uh, no super rush. Nobody's like running or whatnot, but everybody's kind of taking it light footed and and you know approaching. Minuteman is staying quiet and guiding you guys like what streets to to take uh, and to get there. Noises. Oh no, Davy Jones, you're actually not late. Um, they're just getting to the action, so you are right on time. <laughs> Welcome, my friend. <clears throat> As we're walking, uh, I also take a look at any civilians I can and just kind of use my total memory to kind of like memorize their different features so I can oh, yeah? like build 100%. Going to be. Yeah, good idea. All right. So when you finally get to the location, basically where it is is uh, the location our... in question is actually the remains of a little park that sat in between uh, two what would have been apartment complexes that have long since been run down. And in fact, it doesn't even look like the uh, the citizens here uh, gave them much mind. Or both apart both complexes are in really poor condition. On our way there, I'm gonna keep an eye out, uh, paying attention for anyone who might seem to be following us with their eyes. Okay. There might be people who can see through invisibility of any sort, so mm -hmm. just yeah, anybody you, who like follows along with us. You are not picking up uh, on anything of that nature. Um, Ixion couldn't make it. Uh, Davy Jones, he uh, was feeling ill at the last minute, uh, so he was hoping he could make it, but unfortunately not. Um, so when you guys get to the park... Uh, it looks like one of the reasons why it was chosen is there's a nice bit of brush that has been built up on, on either side and, and garbage and whatnot, so it's good for obscuring view without having invisibility. Uh, you make your two duplicates, and poof, off you go. All right, give me an intuition check, Dale. This has turned out to be a really handy power. Uh, 70. My intuition is excellent. All right. So you send them off. Uh, I So as you send them off, they're going to be acting like normal humans, right? Not like purposely doing vision stuff, like sliding through walls and, and whatnot, even though they oh, right, can. Yeah. Right, yeah, no, uh, making sure I'm keeping up appearances. Okay, okay. That's what I figured, but I wanted to make sure. Okay. Yeah. So the first complex, the one, um, the one that's out a little bit further... Uh, you can tell that it sat next to what was probably like a, you know, back in the day, a, a decent strip mall slash supermarket complex that has long fallen into disuse. Uh, the, the immediate topside grounds looks like it had been turned into kind of a tent city where uh, there's not really many people here anymore, but uh, there had been some cars uh, left. Um, kind of just left about and, and whatnot. Um, but it's pretty vacant. Uh, when you get uh, start walking down the um, the underground parking structure, it only goes down maybe three three stories. You're not seeing anything uh, terribly out of the ordinary. Uh, you do see some folks uh, on the um, lower, the lowest level. Um, and there, there are, by the way, there are lights on down here. Um, not many, but there are some, the parking structure lights that are on. Uh, but they're, they're more, um, huddled and, uh, trying to keep to themselves just because of the chaos and whatnot. Um, and keeping, you know, uh, kind of keeping an eye out, making sure nobody walks down. So they're actually startled, uh, when you, when you come around, but they don't make any sort of, uh, you know, overt moves or anything of that nature. Uh, you're pretty sure this area isn't it, um, you know, uh, with your with your intuition and your heightened intelligence. You didn't spot anything out of the ordinary that looked like working security cameras or anything that that stood out to you that was that blend in an inconspicuous manner. So, with the exception of this, it looks like the only people making this place home are people who are just trying to basically ride out the storm and, and stay away from everybody. Gotcha. Okay. The second complex you go to actually goes down 
uh, five stories. Uh, the further you go down, when you get to about the third, um, there are cars that are that that have been pushed into the way, like, uh, and all they really are just down to their, their uh, almost their frames at this point. They're not even uh, serviceable. Uh, that have been pushed in the way to kind of set up like a, a you know a roadblock or a choke point as it goes for you know further down. Uh, and from what you can tell, you can see some people posted up down here, kind of keeping an eye out. They do not look like you know the the people from the other area you spotted. These guys look like you know they're they're more well fed, uh, although they they look dirty and and uncivil. They look like they could probably mess up your average Joe who, who you know, happened to come down here. Um, so at, at this point, um, you're probably trying to stay as nondescript as possible. Um, you've gotten a couple people flag you down, you know, for being where you're not supposed to be. And so you're, you've been able to kind of play it off and like, oh, you know, sorry, sort of thing, wrong area, and then basically walk through a wall and kind of bypass them or something to keep going. Right. You know, without much of a problem. When you get down to the the, the fifth uh, level of the structure, you can see that part of it has been uh, destructed at, at some point. Hard to tell if it, if the, the, the wall or siding gave in or if it was just blown or tunneled. Um, it doesn't look like it was reinforced in any fashion, so whatever happened, happened. And it looks like it goes into the sewers. Okay. All right, so I'm relaying this uh, from my actual self to uh, all right. everybody around me. Okay. Are you going in? Uh, can't. Do I think uh, I'm out of like line of sight for anybody so that I could go in without them seeing me? For right now, you are. Um, but given the fact that you look like just your average, you know, bum from this area, yeah. it's not going to pass if you if you get in there. So you could still explore and try to stay hidden because you you know, physicality wise, you can slide through walls or objects or whatnot. So trying to stay hidden. You can, but if you get spotted, you know you'll you're going to alert the wrong people. But you can you can keep pushing forward if you want. So then I asked the team. I could attempt to obtain more information. However, the more I try, the more likely they will realize that something is wrong. This wouldn't be any direct danger to us or me, of course. However. How much do we want them to be on alert for when we actually arrive? I would think as little as possible. While you're relaying that, um, Dale, why don't you give me an intuition check? Since you're still just kind of keeping an eye out while you're relaying this information. Yeah. Uh, 59. All right. That's well enough. I don't even need to know your intuition for that. <laughs> So you can hear a rail line. Hmm. And from, from that hole, you can see a rail driver pass the hole and several carts hmm. go with it. They have a makeshift rail line in this area. Is it, uh, is it like within the sewers yeah is that where i'm saying okay mm -hmm. they seem to have constructed it within the sewer system i was haven't there, seen anyone get on or off yet was there a subway there before jerome did i know about any oh, kind of good a grief no mm -mm. okay um you would know that there had been a a uh, subway here uh it, it did Not originally there were tunnels there it, were already tunnels yeah there. it did originally connect parts of the uh, of the the you know older parts of the city but obviously they haven't been used for, for Fairside in, in a long, long time. They were officially closed down, you know, well before uh, the 1950s. Those, those tunnels haven't been used for 40 years. They're using them now. They have constructed something, some sort of 
railway device. I shall see what else I can find. Do we have info on the other dwelling? Because we thought there was two possible. From the other dwelling, it seems that that is not the location. This okay. location I'm finding right now is definitely something. They have multiple individuals guarding the area deep down. They have a small blockade and guards. <coughs> and again, something within the sewers. It seems that they are transporting either materials, individuals, or both. I haven't seen what they're transporting yet. Okay. Uh, we have the other Aegis agents there with us, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, yes, yeah, so it's Minuteman, them. War Nurse, and four, four other uh, agents. I'm going to turn to them and say, um, you might want to have somebody look up the plans for those tunnels because it sounds like they are able to get out of this part of town by using the tunnels. So wherever okay. those lead, we're going to want to look outside of Fairview. All right. So he looks to one of the agents who's got a you know communications pack on and he says, you heard her. Flag that in. We need those plans ASAP. Because this blockade is not going to keep them in if they're using the tunnels. No, it's not. That actually makes this much a much bigger crisis. If uh, what we thought might be true. So, uh, can my copy uh let's see so he's able to see into the sewers from where he's at yeah uh, like there's there's some to... lighting problems down here for you because you don't you know have like you know supervision to see in the dark or whatnot but yeah i mean you can you can peer around the corner and you know see see the 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 line which you know had been like a sewer line kind of converted to a rail line okay and uh Within within those cars, did they have anything in them? People or like crates or anything like that? Or... Okay, but you're going to explore a little bit further. Um, yeah. Why don't you go ahead and give me an intuition check? Uh, Sixty. Okay. Uh, so the cart itself had, uh, or, or the rail driver, I should say, had gone down a little a little piece further. Uh, so you have to walk further south. Uh, at this point to, to catch back up to it, but it wasn't terribly far. Uh, when you when you get down there, um, you can see that what they've done is they have, um, they're actually reusing some of the old um, uh, subway cars. So they, they have a modified rail driver, so they that's completely different. That looks like it's much more modernized, but they've repurposed the... Um, uh, the carts that are in there. One cart looks like it has uh, some crates in it from what you can tell. <clears throat> uh, and there's some flickering lights on the inside. You know, they didn't really, they weren't too terribly concerned with that, but the, the carts themselves would, would have some sort of lighting in it. Uh, and the other one uh, has uh, about 10 people in it. Can I tell, like, um, do they all seem like they're disheveled, like they're mm -hmm. Like they're okay. Um, are they like bound, or do they seem like like they're free to move around? Okay. Uh, why don't you um give me another intuition check as you are uh, getting closer to observe? Okay. Hey, are you thinking of jumping on that tram? <laughs> we maybe. Who knows? Uh, seventy-eight. Okay. As you get up closer. Um, you can see that there are some guys, you know, coming off and on and looking around. Um, these guys uh, who you see looking around, they are, they're dressed more like professional mercenaries. So tactical gear, all nondescript, well-armed, kind of got the, you know, cap to obscure their, you know, the... the uh, you know the the vi or you know anybody anybody looking at him from above or whatnot, uh, some nice gear you know sort of thing, 
Um, and you already spot like immediately like five of them kind of wandering up around making sure the line is secure. So getting further is going to be very difficult. But you peek in and you can see the bars or the poles that were used for people to hold on to uh, have been converted so these people could be slave chained uh, to them. Okay. I have located how they are trans transporting slaves. It seems that they also have additional help mercenaries. I go ahead and like describe as much in detail uh, what they look like. Okay. Question. Um, yes. Um, did we determine that? Okay, so um, blackouts got like black skin, right? Actually, the picture is in the chat, but yes, if you um, if you scroll back far enough, like if you click on an image and scroll, you'll find him. But basically, he's big and beefy. He's got kind of the the white '90s eyes sort of look with no like pupil. Um, uh -huh. The top half of of him is almost completely black, and it kind of it's almost as if it was it tendrilled down uh, around his body to okay. to more of a darkish. Uh, 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 uncharacteristic brown, not not like an actual authentic like racial brown, but like a inhuman kind of coloring brown. Did we determine that users of dark also their skin changes color? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Long time users, yes. So that should that should make it fairly easy for us to see who's who's been on it and who's who hasn't. Uh, for long uh, for long term use, yes. Okay. I think that's the picture of Blackout from way up earlier in the chat. Yeah. Where's yep. There he is, yep. Show enough. Where did you post it? On the chat. Facebook chat. Superhero Facebook chat, chat yeah. yeah. <clears throat> oh, there it is. Okay. Okay, okay. Okay, just uh, calling that out so we can keep in mind that some of these people might be hopped up. Probably most of them are hopped up. <laughs> if we're if we're being real. <laughs> um, when she calls that out, you don't see anybody fitting that description chain to these. None of these individuals seem to be on that drug. They seem to be slaves i'm not showing them as having any sort of obvious deviancy okay the individuals that are guarding the area seem like they're professionals like they have funding they are a part of a different organization Check they are their using pieces they of have some any ways to hmm. yeah I, I go ahead and are there, are there any identifying markers on their uniforms uh good question um <clears throat> if you're going to advance further to which is going to put you at risk uh, you can make another intuition check to tell i can tell you however you uh, since you can hear them they're speaking spanish they do seem to be speaking spanish rather than english intuition check for me Something to do with military background, might know of some special unit, blah, blah, blah. Not enough. No, not okay. other than Spanish. That could be it, anything, really. <clears throat> okay. I was just asking. Yeah, no, it's a fair Doesn't question. Hurt to ask. <laughs> Instead of approaching to see them clearly, can I try... Can I try a power stunt where I would be generating, like holographic lenses or something for my copy to see through to give him like a degree of telescopic vision i will say you can absolutely try that as a power stunt so if you want to burn 100 karma okay. uh, and then give me the roll uh you're going to need a red result okay. if you don't get it obviously you get your 100 karma back so it's not like you okay. spend it and lose it gotcha oh, okay. that's nice. <laughs> Let's see, and that's going to be based off of my power, which is incredible. Okay. 
So you need a 91 or higher. Nope, only 51. Okay. Okay. All right. So well, it was right next to 90. You can <clears throat> you can go through walls, right? Yes, my copies can. Can you travel within the walls? Technically, yes. And stay out of sight? Uh, let's see here. My ability to my ability to gauge exactly where my copy is will be more difficult, especially at this range. But I suppose like you can definitely feel you're getting close to your range at this point. Yeah, I do seem to be nearing my maximum. The Hmm. wavelengths are not going to maintain their coherence at this point. Can I tell if um, this railway would keep would keep going like further away Mm -hmm. from me, or would it? It it uh, absolutely will. Yes. Okay. So it's definitely connected to something longer down here. So are you at the lowest level? And from what you can tell as well, it's leading well outside of Fairside. Okay. It seems this railway goes a good distance away. It seems to do move farther out of Fairside. As far as my depth, uh, am I, I, I am like at the lowest depth yes. of the, uh, yeah. I am. This is within the sewer system. But you didn't see where they might be holding our our target? Not yet. That's in a different area of the building. Let me see what I can do. So I go uh, ahead I would, and... Uh, oh. It would be nice to know how many are guarding in that area. <clears throat> I'm going to do another check of our surroundings to make sure people aren't looking at us. Sure, go ahead even and roll your intuition. Been, even though we've probably been whispering, yeah. it's still communication. Yep. Uh, <laughs> 28. Okay. But he makes it very obvious he's looking around. Okay. Yeah. 88. Okay. Uh, you guys don't see anything out of the ordinary, but it's a good idea to keep that in mind, since you guys are talking but invisible. I'm, I'm going to kind of whisper over the angler and say, what are you looking for? Someone looking. Okay, I, I didn't see anybody. All right, so uh, let's see here. So are you going to salt and pepper this and ah, push it? You can still push it and go a little bit further out. It, it's just the, the only real risk you have at this point is if you hop into the wall and, and travel, obviously you're not going to, you know, you're not going to be seen, but you can't see either. So you right. may accidentally hop back out into an open area and walk right in front of them. That's really the yeah. only, you know, risk that you have at this point. And I take it, I can't really go further, like down this track without kind of losing my copy because i'm at the maximum range. no you still can oh, yeah, yeah you oh, absolutely yeah, okay. you still have range to do that oh, it's okay. just if you're walking along the rail you're out in the open right if i went just into the ground and then kind of trying to triangulate where i am compared to where i know my copy is like use that to gauge how far he's going within the ground to like just kind of go further down the railway to see if it like if I can see exactly where this track is going. So basically submerge most of yourself into into like the ground or something and but just like this and kinda Pretty basically, much, yeah. basically you're gonna yeah. pull a land shark. More or less. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, I, I forgot if we ever answered like this. Are you able to change it into a non humanoid shape or even a small humanoid shape? Like an animal? Like a rat? My default array <clears throat> is set so that it is simply a humanoid sh- shape, but I admittedly haven't tried to alter the geometry of it. I suppose I could attempt that. Can I try a power stunt to see if I can change? Absolutely, one hundred percent. But well, on the fly, yeah, you could you could absolutely do that if you had not sent it out away. Doing it on okay. the fly, however, yeah. Um, okay. 
I won't make you power stunt it though, but you will need to get a red result. Okay. You can also maybe like get under the platform. Yeah. Where... Uh, so only got a ten. So okay. I didn't work. But that plan, uh, um, that plan will work if you just submerge yourself into the the ground, basically, and just kind of keep your eyes like just above, so you can continue on and and keep it under the keep it along like, the tracks. Like the subway would like would have a platform, but like mm -hmm. the tracks would be down here. Yep. So he could like mm -hmm. stick close to the wall. He yeah. could absolutely do that. Yeah. Like wherever it's going to look like I can avoid, you know, being seen, of course, sure. is the ultimate goal. Yeah, it's going to obscure your vision, but that's going to keep you, you know, hidden. Nobody's going to be looking for half a head floating underneath the tracks. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, okay, yeah, I'll so you kind of sink and slide and, and, you know, start going on. Do you get, from where it's currently parked, and you can, from what you can hear, it sounds like they're probably getting ready to move again. Um. <clears throat> But, uh, and of course, they're still speaking in Spanish. And you uh, give me another intuition check as you peek back up to see uh, who it is that's here. 27. 27. Okay. Uh, that is not terribly good. What's your intuition? Uh, intuition is excellent. Yes, that's a white result. Yeah. Okay. So you peek up and you don't see anything uh out of the ordinary um you can hear people but you don't see them uh and you end up you end up hearing a comment you know like an exclamation although you don't speak spanish so it's hard to make out what exactly is being said mm -hmm. so when i hear that i i'm gonna assume because there wouldn't be anything else that maybe they're seeing me, and so I just immediately kind of dip entirely underneath the ground so that they shouldn't be able to see me at that point. Okay. Was it Adio Mios? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so then you can hear, you know, some footsteps above you, like yeah. you know, checking things out or whatnot. Mm -hmm in some sort of question or whatnot, then you can start to hear the rail, you know, picking back up and driving away. Okay. So then I let the let everybody know, like, so the rail is continuing. It seems as though uh, I am, at this point, pushing the boundaries of probability with regard to maintaining concealment. At this point, I may need to withdraw and see what I can find within the building proper to see if we can locate Sledgehammer or the others. That sounds more feasible. Yeah. So then, while staying underground, uh, I make sure to slide my person back like the opposite direction where they came to about the location where uh, they would have been out of sight, pop back up just so that my eyes are there, so I can get my bearings. Sure. So that I can then go back and, the, and uh, the opposite way. Yeah go, yeah, go back the opposite way to the tunnel. So the opposite way, the, the tunnel itself, um, that looks like the rail line connects to probably a couple of different points down here, uh, which at first thought, it, it, you know, probably means he's got an entire complex down here. Um. But the first stop-off point uh, that you come across down here, it's got several people uh, hanging out and watching. None of them are, are dressed like the guys that you saw before. They all look like, you know, hired thugs with some weapons and, and whatnot. Um, nobody seems to uh, be looking your way or, you know, or, or you know, catching, you know, spotting this this head sort of thing and you can hear them uh you can end up hearing uh hearing them talk you know that uh you know the last shipment should be coming through here like in about a half hour and he says the uh, boss gonna have us you know bug out then he says no he's expecting the heroes to show up anytime now he says oh so it means we get to crack some skulls hell yeah so let the team know like 
it seems that Blackout is actually waiting for heroes to arrive. So he's anticipating us. Correct. The uh. next shipment of individuals or materials seems to be within a half hour using their secret rail system. Minute man, I think you may need to get in contact with city officials and see where that line goes. Yeah. Because the cordon has a, a, a big breach. We're we're working on that right now. Uh, I'm trying to get the uh, I'm trying to get plans without notifying them. If we notify, if we end up uh, finding, if or I should say, in character, if we notify them uh, that this is happening right underneath their, you know, right underneath their feet, they're going to break their their own cordon, and it's going to cause a citywide panic. Furthermore, there's a chance that this could go up higher, and somebody knows. And that would upset a lot of plans before we're ready to tackle them. It could also just be that there's a mole, but... <clears throat> All right. Um... So our options are basically fall into the trap knowing willingly. Um, can you check the upper floors of this? The structure before we you still got you've still got more of the line to go down or you can just turn and go down one of the hallways at this point into the complex i can either search the lines more if we need or i can more accurately move further into the building to scout it out which do we prefer I personally would like to know how many are with what's his name again? Blackout. Hammer? Oh no, Slash our guy. Sledgehammer. Sledgehammer. Sledgehammer, yeah. Sledgehammer. Um, I would like to see how many is guarding Sledgehammer so that I mean, we don't want to come around a corner and there's twenty of these if... drug induced individuals. If if we can uh, release him, he may be able to assist us as well. Yeah. But but he may not, depending on his his state. I'll start searching the building then. So I go ahead and have my copy kind of start moving into the uh, the building itself rather to scout that out more. Okay, give me another intuition check. Dun, 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 dun. 91. Ooh. All right. So you start going in, and quickly your analytical mind starts going over kind of the way this is laid out. And most everything down here is all new in the sense of like nothing seems to be repurposed. This has all been built with, you know, a, a with forethought. So everything, it's not like randomly laid out like you would expect, you know, underground lines in New York, for example, you know, where you have like, you know, you know, utility shed down here, down this line, and then several lines later, it's a, you know, a break area for city employees or something weird like that. Like everything here is very regimented. Hallways are designed to go like to here, here, and here. So start, after you, you make that correlation, you, you start picking up on, you know, okay, well, if this does this and this goes here, like, within a couple turns, you start figuring out, like, what the layout of this place really is. And it, it must be easily one square mile uh, in size. It's it's massive. Um, and uh, there's, you know, people kind of running around and whatnot, uh, uh, you know, clearly getting, you know, what final preparations that they, they need to get done. Uh, you end up spotting... Uh, some guy uh, coming past you, uh, not walking on his legs, uh, but he has like f uh, four tendrils coming off of him, and he's walking on two of them as he as he goes by. Okay. Um, and like and he go uh, he ends up going to a uh, he ends up going uh, into like 
instinctively into another door down here that that you you spot um and you can either continue exploring or you can follow him at this point he's kind of standing out because he sounds like one of the guys you're looking for okay uh i'm gonna follow him a little bit okay so you keep you keep low follow him he's he's clearly oblivious um, he walks in through the door, uh, and the door clearly has like hazard marks, uh, you know, signs on it or whatnot. Um, you know, toxic chemicals, and when you you float in there, it's a full on it's a full on lab. Like you're, there's you know tables, there's professional grade everything down here. Okay. Uh, and you see that there's uh, uh, a guy in a lab coat uh, who appears to be you know sealing up. Uh, you know, some containers at this point. Uh, whatever is in there, you're not sure, but you can see that there was foam in between them to keep them uh, safely locked in when the the uh, metal containers were were locked down. And um, <clears throat> you can see that there are two of the um, two of those mercenary looking guys in here. Uh, as well, and he says, "All right, you've got your stuff. Time to, you know, it's time for you to bug out. Boss wants you gone." And so, one of the guys responds, and he, you know, it's in a pretty thick German accent, uh, not Spanish. You know, and he re he replies something to the effect of like, uh, "You know, the the samples uh, were not uh, to the specifications that we required." He says, I, "I, quite frankly, I don't give a damn." He says, "You know, I'm not. I, you know, I, I'm. I'm paid to make sure. You know, I follow my boss's orders." And he says, "Take a hike, Kraut." And so the guy kind of looks, you know, shoots him a dirty look, snaps his finger, and you know the other guy comes with him. They take the cases and start making their way to the uh, the rail line. All right. So I I'm let the like, oh, that's his name. No. <laughs> probably not so I let the group know there is an advanced extremely large facility underground it seems that he has had some backing there were more of those individual mercenary agents here as well they even have an advanced laboratory containers to contain the materials and it seems that one individual <clears throat> with a German accent said that the materials were not to their specifications. It seems that they are actually dealing in this drug with other parties. And they're about to, to leave the city, aren't they? That's what it appears. All right, oh, and I'm as you guys are as you guys are uh, you know sussing that out, uh, those of you who are topside end up seeing that the uh, radio guy um, gets a message and comes over to to Minuteman, and he says, you know, uh, he says, I I need five agents at that location yesterday. Get them sent out as quietly as possible. And he's like, Roger that, sir. And you know, radio's in a command. And he says, that line that you spotted ends uh, roughly three more miles down the way. It goes into the city. <clears throat> now that I'm, like, pretty close to these agents, uh, can I now see any identifying marks or symbols on their uniforms? Uh, yes, actually you can. You see um, what appears to be... Um, a modified swastika. Is this familiar with like anything that Reich Shield has made or no. new precious emblems or anything? No. No. No, this this is more of a uh more um I mean at first glance it looks like of the World War II swastika, but since you've got a closer look at it, there's been some modifications to it. Um so it stands out a little bit. Uh, as far as its modernization, 
Um, so it's not like a direct Nazi ripoff, but Nazi of some kind. All right. Would I be able to, um, just to show everybody what it looks like, could I um, change my current form around uh, you know, my physical body to show like that emblem like on my back or something so that they can see what it looks like? Give me a yellow result since you're currently uh, in use and uh, trying to modify your, your physical form. <laughs> Probably not. 27. Okay. So, so great idea, but no. Uh, but you could do it if you recalled your uh, recalled your your body. Right. Okay. So I just say, uh, it looks like the individuals in the mercenary uniforms they have an emblem, a modified swastika. Once this is done, I'll be able to recreate it holographically, just for future reference. I'll see what else I can find. <clears throat> Does the symbol strike any nerves? Uh, any memories? Um. Eh, what the hell? I'll give it. I'll give you a check. Why don't you give me an uh, intuition check? <laughs> no. Okay. So, uh, when I'm uh, when I'm in this lab, do the uh, the drums do they look like they're makeshift steel drums or like specially made? Oh yeah, for like holding containers. This this is all like specially made stuff. Okay. Yeah, everything down here is is like laboratory wise stuff that you were wanting the whole time for like your own okay. lab. You're like, oh damn it, <laughs> <laughs> I I wanted oh, this and I wanted that, that and. <laughs> I have this on back order and <laughs> okay. Can you make any observations on um what this substance I mean presumably it's dark but um can can you see any evidence of how they plan to disseminate it maybe into the water supply or something along those lines? So far, it seems they may be transporting on that rail, at least for the time being. Let me see if I can access any possible computers or documentation. Uh, do I see like any type of computer in the area? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's, there's uh, actually more than one. Okay. Uh, can I move around in this in this state without uh, being noticed, or are there still people around? Um, there are still uh, two doctors in here. So uh, if you want to wait till they leave, you can. But no telling how long it's going to be. Okay. Before I do that, I'll see if I can actually locate Sledgehammer. Okay. So uh, I... Give me another intuition check at this point as you kind of have an understanding of the layout and you're like, okay, well, I'm going to eeny, meeny, miny, mo this. Man, only 39 that time. Okay. Well, you're getting higher, slowly. And 39, <laughs> your intuition is what? Uh, what is that again? Uh, excellent. Okay, yeah, so just off of it. Alrighty. So it's taking you longer than you uh, had hoped. Um, and you were, you were at least doing a good job of staying out of sight. It was a good idea to kind of land shark this and... and stay really close to the floor um you do eventually find uh what appears to be uh, a holding cell and there's two there's two you know thugs you know waiting out you know, out front there's it's your uh typical re super reinforced door with like you know the bars you know t so you can see in okay uh, does it look like it's uh, locked with a physical lock or an electronic one? Electronic one. Okay. And there's uh, two like beefy guards in front of it, or? Uh, yeah, but they look like they're, they pretty much look like they're thugs. Okay. And I don't see any obvious like darkening, like they're affected by no, dark, no, no. or do I? Nothing okay. like that. No. Okay. Um. So like 
with finding this area then uh do uh so like would i then be able to piece together with my total memory exactly how to get to this location yes. physically okay yes okay i believe i have found his location there's a steel reinforced door and an electronic lock with two thugs not affected by dark guarding it in front should i attempt to make contact with sledgehammer can you go through the door can i can attempt have, it can you have sledgehammer make some noise for what purpose what's your idea well if he's in that that cage you should be able to hear him if he's making any noise It'll also prevent you from being detected. Lightbringer, do you still have connection with Sledgehammer? I haven't been holding it, but I can check back in. <clears throat> okay, you certainly can. Uh, you are using your illusions as well. Uh, so you're going to want to give me a yellow result. <laughs> Would you like to put karma? Oh, you already rolled. Nope. <laughs> That's an eight. Okay. Uh, so you're able to reestablish connection. However, the invisibility comes down. Whip. I hate sometimes having ideas. <laughs> but but, 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 but I've got him on the line. <laughs> What's that? But I've got him on the line. Yes. Sledge, can you, uh, we, we think, we think we have somebody close to you. We're checking the layout. Can you make some noise? Uh, yeah, that, that's not going to be too hard. Uh, hold on a second. So he shouts and you hear, you know, really loud. Hey, knuckleheads. One of the guys like turns and, you know, yeah. looks, and looks into the thing. And at that moment, I try to take that part, that opportunity to slide in. Okay. And they're just like, what? And he just looks at him and says, sup. <laughs> the guy just goes like, Pff, turns and looks, you know, looks away. Cool. Uh, did, I, don't, I don't, did that help? I, I yelled. So did I, did I make it in? Oh yeah, yeah, you made it in. Okay. And uh, looking at, looking in here, do I see any cameras uh, in his cell? Oh yes. Okay. And so he's asking you, Lightbringers, like, did that help? Yes. I um, think we've got eyes on you. Uh, sit tight. Uh, it's, it sounds like they're expecting us, so that's not great. Also, it sounds like they're breaking the lab and using the, the old subway tunnels to move outside of Fairside. That would make sense, because I've been hearing a lot of movement. It sounds like they're almost done. Lightbringer, ask him if he's going to be able to assist if we spring him. Uh, what is your physical condition? And I'm looking at him, too, to see if oh. he's got injuries and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's been, he's been beat up, but, I mean, he's... There's he, nothing looking like he's broken or whatnot. It looks like he's been roughed up some, like you would expect from, like, an 80s action film. He has been bruised, but it does not appear as if he has any sustained massive injuries. You get me out of here, I can I can crack some skulls. That's what I wanted to hear. All right, we'll we'll be back. All right. Cut the connection. Can I can I bring the illusion back up? Uh, go ahead and give me your psyche. Can I do an uh, intuition check real quick to see if anyone's noticed us? Absolutely. I was going to ask the same thing. Ha ha! 67 on this one. Okay. 81. And what'd you get? 51. All right. Good job, Brittany. Yeah, I got a 81 on monstrous. Okay, so as you guys oh as you guys are looking looking around, you can tell that you know some people who have been uh ha that had been just meandering around notice that you guys are kind of you know, that there's something going on over at the park. So any of them look 
black? No. Okay. And uh, unfortunately, right now, um, Lightbringer is a little anxious and stressed, and is having trouble focusing on bringing up the the invisibility for you know the the number of people that are here. How long until I can try again? You can try again right now. Okay. There's not like a cool down. No. Yeah, I'm gonna and I'm gonna let him know if people are seeing us. Seventy one. Okay. So you re-engage your invisibility and, and you're getting a bit of a headache at, at this point, uh, you know, from the struggle and just the pressure of it all. But you, you pull it back up. Start right. carrying Excedrin with us. And, you know, and Minuteman's like, OK, well, if, you know, we've been spotted. We have very little time left. It's, you know, we our, our location's probably going to be compromised. We got to figure this out fast, guys. Well, we know where we know where Sledgehammer is, but we also know that we're expected. Yeah, I have not located yet Blackout's exact area, nor uh, all of his lieutenants. I mean, but he I can do know have... how to get to Sledgehammer. I'm inclined to believe that they're not in Fairside right now. I would guess that they have also left the compound. Based off of what you said. Um, more than likely, most of them left during the original cordon, and he was staying behind to further his research, based off of what you said about what he said. <clears throat> However, we have no choice but to spring the trap if we want to get Sledgehammer out of there. So how can we do this in the most unexpected way possible? Well I have never had any experience with this blackout, and it seems like you guys know more about him. What would you, what would you think he would use as what you guys call a booby trap? There were a know. lot of mercs at us. Would be my guess at this point. So we're just going up against individuals. Possibly, my and guess he would use other people. And uh, Jerome, just going through, I haven't, have I found any, like, specific high-tech traps? Or does, does it just seem like a bunch of dudes with, like, guns and stuff as far you as You haven't seen anything go? of that nature, no. I mean, okay. it's, there's probably security here, but if it's anything like the vein, it's probably tucked away in, in like, you know, false bottoms and, and things of that nature. Okay. So I definitely think we should stay invisible, and when we get closer... Keep an eye out for cameras because I can also take those down. The the people that were talking about the heroes coming, were they the mercenaries? They were, right, Jerome? Mm hmm They were, yes. Did it or, look or not, like... Sorry, not the mercenaries. They were the thugs. Oh, okay. Uh, there were oh, actually they... just thugs that were mentioning that, not the mercenaries themselves. Okay. I'm thinking, uh, trying to guess who among them is deviant and who is simply armed. We might not have the luxury of time to determine that in detail. Okay. Um, do I know about how much more of this compound there might be to search through or... Okay. Yep. If you're gonna if you're gonna continue searching, I mean, you've got you can. It's just at this point you're just running the risk of discovery. Yeah. I can keep reconnaissance, or we can focus on advancing. We could try to advance while I continue reconnaissance, but that adds difficulty. I think we could start walking. Yeah, I think we should start walking. I think it would be better if um, if we move from this location now that it's been noticed. Uh, agreed. And I'm going to look over at Minuteman. What do you think? Do you have any suggestions? All right. Well, let's uh, let's uh, change positions then and post up uh, at this. Uh, and he and he, you know, points, you know, like 
half a block away. I, you know, post up at this um, this building here. And shown, if I understood correctly, you have a you can generate electricity. Yes. Hold that thought. Okay. Um, Hyperion, see what else that you can find out. I think I, I, I think I may have something that's going to give us some additional cover uh, while we get into position. Understood. So, yeah, I keep looking, mainly trying to find out where Blackout would be, if he'd be here, or just, okay. you know. Give, me an, give me an intuition at. check. 90. Ooh, nice. Okay. So you have kind of slipped around uh, as as best as possible to uh, <clears throat> uh, to to get the layout of the place, and, and you've actually got most of it down, uh, especially committed to to your memory at this point. Um, when you end up coming into the lair, basically, for lack of a better term, you know, it's it's a swanky looking room with a, a you know a egotistical looking throne with uh blackout sitting on you know sitting on it you know kind of watching some you know some monitors whatnot you can tell he's you know watching the uh uh the city uh and at this point like everybody you know everybody's uh, uh in there you know waiting for him uh and you end up uh, like one of the 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 big guy uh you know, Brute says, you know, at this point, the last shipment's off, boss. He says, yeah, we can expect these do-gooders any time now. And he says, I I'm I'm just waiting to see what these what these guys have you know, have to offer. And he says, you're not, you, he says, you're not afraid? He says, not in the least. Right. Do I see, like, all the others, like, coil intake and all, oh, yeah. all of them there with them? Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. They're, they're, they're all there. I located Brute and all of his lieutenants. They're when they're in one specific location. He himself, Blackout, is on a throne of sorts, watching multiple screens. They are fully aware that we intend to attack, and he is relishing the thought. Okay. Well, let him relish this. Uh, Shone, can you do me a favor? Grab a hold of those uh, those lines over there and give it all you've got. Okay. Gonna do as he asked. Okay. Uh, give me a, a check according to your power. And what is your electricity generation? Um, it's an amazing. Okay. Forty-four. Okay. So you guys all see uh, those of you who are there start seeing uh, uh, you know electricity pumping off of shown at this point uh, and going into the lines and you can actually start to see uh, uh, areas around the town like street lights start to turn on uh, uh, and whatnot as uh, the grid starts accepting you know more and more power. And so they're, you know, in they're they're in their throne room, uh, you know, just kind of you know watching, you know, things going on. And um, you know, one of the guys ends up saying, he says, "So when do you think uh, Hoplite's going to, you know, end up kicking the door down?" He says, uh, "I don't know. Give it another hour or so. I haven't given him the call yet." Hmm. So I'm hearing. I'm hearing, uh, like blackout. Mm -hmm. Say, say that. Yeah. Blackout seems to have connections to Hoplite, or he is fully aware of what's going to happen. They expect them to actually attack within an hour. Uh. Minuteman uh, turns to show and he says, I need you to give it all you've got, not just turning on some streetlights. 
If you would like to put uh, karma to your roll before you roll it, you can. 92. Okay, well, never mind. <laughs> so you got you said 92 mm-hmm. okay that is a red result so at that point did you say that's a rad result red it is a rad but it, 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 it is but it is rad <laughs> and just like the movie rad is life don't ever watch that movie it's terrible I don't know what movie that is. Oh, it's terrible. It, it it's a basically it's your your it's like Karate Kid in a sense. What's it, what's it called? Rad. Oh. oh but okay. but it's all about BMX bikes. <laughs> wow. It does okay. sound pretty rad. Yep. Ever see Airborne? Mm-mm. Sorry, I'm, so, I'm, I'm distracting. So shown at this point flexes and you see like her hair starts standing up and just like blue energy crackling off of her into you know, into the, this this you know power line that she's holding on to and now you start seeing sparks fly things start exploding all around the city as uh all around fairside as the uh the last of the open lines uh in this dilapidated section of town just start going off and, and you know, causing all sorts of problems with streetlights blowing up, uh, other lines overheating, and now you end up seeing the lights start to, to start to magnify some uh, in the complex, and then everything shut down temporarily. So, did I shut down the the subway as well? Uh, you have you have no idea, no way of telling right now. Uh, and then as you're sitting there, then emergency lights kick on and some emergency power, you know, turns on and black, you know, blackout looks around and he says, well, that was unexpected. And so, you know, the, the other guy's looking around and coils like, well, emergency, uh, the emergency generators have kicked in boss. Can I attempt to take them out? Uh, you have no idea what's going on right now outside oh, of the fact okay. that you have generated a bunch of electricity so we didn't see any of the emergency lights pop up around the compound it, you have no idea what's going on okay. right now all you've done is generate a lot of electricity and caused a lot of lights and you know, street lights and whatnot around the town to kind of blow okay. the room that they are in is now relying on emergency power coil is aware of it this did take blackout by some surprise but he still does not appear worried he doesn't know I exist. <laughs> so, I mean, at that point, Minuteman says, it's go time at this point. Get in there. Understood. I go ahead at this point then uh, so I can focus and, and drop my delusion so I can focus on my actual self. Okay. With focus, how far can I push out my sleep? Uh, you've never tried, so... Don't know. Mm. <clears throat> so how how far away from the building are we? Uh, you are from where you guys moved to. You guys are just under a mile. Okay. Should we get walking? Yeah, and just keep an eye out for cameras because if their emergency backup is on that could mean the cameras are also on I start uh doing like a, a brisk jog okay so you guys are you guys are still invisible yeah I, I'm following my leader okay so you guys are all running for it uh you know making towards the you know making towards the the, the front um as you guys get to the um uh the well the where the entrance is down in the uh, park the the underground parking garage you can see that there are quite a few more guards posted up uh you know at the the entrance there uh you are still invisible they do not see you are you going to attempt to just try and slip past them is the door open there's no door 
At this point, at this point, you guys are at the where the cars meet in the parking garage. I'm gonna try and sleep them. Okay. That is gonna be a 77. All right. Ooh, nice. So you. And that is on. Um, sleep isn't amazing. So. Okay. 77 is well, that's the ba yellow. It's based off your psyche. The power itself is like the uh, uh, range and, and radius. Uh, then that's going to be incredible. Nice. So, so 77 is going to be a yellow. So still uh, pretty impressive. So you reach out, focus, and as you guys come around the corner and he focuses, like everyone just blah, 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 like all 15 just snooze immediately. Um, as you do that, however, you feel a burning sensation on your arm and you take 15 points of damage. Ooh. Ouch. But you walk or jog right past all these guys. They just went right to sleep. Excellent work. The uh, burn is coming from the pearl, I guess. Um, or is it just a probably, sudden reaction, like a, a feedback? Um, you're not sure. Okay. But your body is in pain. It's not like it's centered necessarily on your forearm. Okay. Is there some kind of dampener here in the building? Could be. But he hasn't mentioned it to anybody yet. He's just going. Okay. Never mind. That's a good, <laughs> that is a good question. Uh, keep in mind, if it was a dampener, you would be visible. Yeah. But also, they probably wouldn't be able to do stuff too. Right. Which would be counterproductive. <laughs> you do not want to be reduced to pea shooters when pea shooters don't really do anything to someone like, say, the Hulk. Except make him more angry. So hold that thought real quick. Uh, you guys go ahead and roleplay. I'll be right back. All right, what's the plan? Sledge first? I would think to go get sledge first because that would give us more the more the merrier. More, more firepower. Yeah. Uh, I wonder if wait, how was how was he restrained? Do you remember? He doesn't seem to be actually restrained. There are cameras within his cell. Be careful using your powers. I got some type of feedback whenever I put these guys to sleep. How badly? Are you okay? Oh, I'm fine. I'm just giving you guys a heads up as we go in. Understood. Have you ever experienced that before? No, I haven't. Strange. Are, are we even still invisible? I think he said we're still invisible right now. Yeah, yeah but... I mean, he... Indicated. He indicated that we were. Yeah, I mean, if we're thinking it's a dampener, there. Are so there out of character, there could literally be somebody who's just resistant to sleep sleep powers, and it could have produced the feedback. Right. Um, Jerome, are there any reflective surfaces nearby that we? can use to to double check that we're invisible the cars uh cars. not large ones but yeah you no. could probably use like a driver's side mirror on a on a car or like windows on a building uh you're down in the underground parking garage oh we are okay um okay i'm gonna i'm gonna go go next to one and just look in the mirror let's see if i see myself you do not okay I think we're good. I, I did let them know that I got some type of feedback. Okay. Do you think the uh, surge enabled Sledge to free himself? I don't know. But you're the one that can find out. Well, do, I don't want to try and let me see what I can. if I have to keep 
invisible. Let me see what I can do. Now that we're uh, closer and I know the layout, can I just project one of my dudes like right to where Absolutely. Uh, his place would be? Okay. Yep. I go ahead and, and do that, but, but like land shark style, uh, just okay. in case. Sure. Uh, I love that. <laughs> that's a new thing now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, to, to see uh, what what's the status is, if I can even see him in his room. Okay. So, I mean, he's like looking around because it's dark and it's just got like a red light, you know, uh, not not a klaxon one up, but just like a you know a dim kind of red light. He's just like looking around with a look of like, well, this sucks. Can I tell if the cameras are like uh, deactivated or not? Uh, Is no, there any unfortunately. Red not. Okay. No, they aren't, or no, he can't tell. He can't tell. Jerome, no okay. can I search? You know, look around the the parking garage where we're at. To see if any of the cameras are moving or if there's any indicator lights or anything like that that they might be on or off. Uh, there are no uh, cameras of that nature down here. Okay. If I tell the group, uh, it looks like, oh, and is he a um, sledgehammer? He's not like restrained by like the wrists or anything, is he? He's yeah. Just, like, mm -hmm. No, oh, he's, he he's, yeah, he's pinned up against the wall. Oh, he is. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Sledge is actually pinned up against the wall. We will need to actually extricate him. It seems that the door itself is still closed. That means we probably need keys. Or have the ability to deactivate the lock or rip it off its hinges. Well, I mean, keys for the manacles or whatever. If... I mean, I don't, I don't have the strength to... Hey. Could try to manipulate my lightning, maybe like a blowtorch. Individuals outside may have keys. Uh, do I see the the manacles? Do they look like they require actual physical keys or something else? No, the man the the manacle system is like built into the wall. Okay, so it looks like it's electronically controlled, more or less. Yeah. Okay. Does it look like to take care of? Sorry, what? I should say, I would have yeah. said that would be easy to take care of. Yeah, yeah. The manacles um, look like they're electronic. I'm guessing that it's probably similar technology to the uh, the inhibitor cuffs. Hmm. Call In case, Shion may be able to deactivate them when we get close. She can manipulate the current through the cuffs. Yeah. That would be fantastic. Let's proceed. All right. Okay, so everybody starts running in there, uh, running forward. Uh, you are guiding the way. Are, are you... Um, well, actually, there's no are you about it. You guys are still invisible. Uh, that first turn off that, you know, the, down that tunnel that, that you end up taking, um, you've got the the four thugs who were there. They're now on like high alert because now the there's like red lights and secure you know backup security lighting kind of illuminating the area, you know, and they're looking around. Um, are you attempting to just bypass them and get straight to Sledgehammer, or are you what what exactly are you doing? I'm gonna look right at the angler. Uh, I'm gonna do it again. <laughs> okay. Uh, not as great this time, but a 51. Okay, so you just kind of focus again and, uh, and without... I'm not using the focus. I'm just... No, I know. I'm just no. saying... Okay. No, it, but to induce the sleep, you still have to kind of focus. Yeah. Um, not the power per se, but so, but so you kind of focus, you reach out and, and again, you know, it, it, it's very much like... Uh, you know, with this particular effect, it's very much like uh, Christopher Walken in the Prophecy, which you should watch, Brittany. It's not the uh, Prophecy. Yes, it it was a nice it was a nice horror movie that wasn't like super graphic, and it yeah, actually wasn't. The first and it was, three were fantastic. The first one was great. The second and third were, eh, but the first one was really good. I and, I like yeah. the. I like the first three because it's a solid trilogy and Christopher Walken is the focus. True. Oh, he's so awesome. Yeah. 
But that being uh, said, it's very much like that. It's just kind of like he focuses real quick and then somebody just and, and collapses. You take Do I get a, a feedback hit? You you take an additional five damage. Now that this has happened again, and you felt that, although not quite as intense, you felt that weakening, it's almost as if this thing is sapping your essence to induce that sleep. I will take a look at the pearl. Does the pearl look like it's cracking? No. Overheating anything like that? No, not at all. I get an intermittent beep sound. It gets faster and faster. No. <laughs> you okay, Angler? Uh, he doesn't express discomfort with that one. Yeah. Well, uh, okay. So you continue on your way to the... Okay. Yep. Uh, so you get to the... Uh, I mean, you make your way around. There's still some people running around, but I take it you're not just trying to sleep everybody you come across. You're just trying to no. do your best to avoid these, them. Yeah, these guys seem like they were directly in our path and the easiest sure. way to get around them without yep. fully alarming the entire facility, at least temporarily, is to put them to sleep. Okay. Yep. And so uh, you end up hearing... Um, uh, you end up hearing something like a um, some some sort of machine activate because it resonates within the, uh, uh, the the whole of the complex. Just as you get up to the door uh, where Sledgehammer happens to be, as you kind of make your way back to the complex, and the two thugs are like looking around. They've got some pretty heavy looking, uh, you know, weapons with them. I'm like, oh, did you hear that? Yeah, yeah, man. What do you think's going on? He says, he, uh, he's like, I, he says, I think the boss just let open the floodgates. Um, coming into this, um, where the, the prisoner is, is it like a segmented hallway? Like where you have a, a narrow gap and then it goes back to the cell or is it more like an open cell environment? Uh, no, uh, at this particular area, it's like a hallway that turns into what would probably be like several cells. Think of it, um, think of it for a visual kind of like where Han Solo and Chewbacca first encounter Princess Leia. All right, and um, is it only the two guards out here? Yeah, it's only the two guys, and they're posted up outside the door to the the cell that's occupied. I'm going to make an additional illusion. Um, that looks like um sledgehammer like looking like passing the hallway and then like noticing them and then like running so basically doing the bigfoot the run through the woods sort of thing <laughs> you know the visual of bigfoot like somebody with a shaky cam is like oh my gosh i see him and it's like bigfoot just doing this thing and kind of looks at them and just kind of keeps on going uh, more more like oh i shouldn't be here and then like basically like i see you and then like him running away. okay they're like run away pretty much okay or or them either either they run away or they'll open the door and look and see if he's in there okay that's what i want to do is it i got a question can i use the static electricity kind of like a taser uh it is possible yes um, go ahead and roll. You need a yellow result with your psyche to maintain your illusion or maintain invisibility. 76. I was about ready to say that didn't look good the way you're holding up your hands like that. You're just like, I, was, I didn't, I didn't touch the dice <laughs> <laughs> on the floor. Okay. 76 at, uh, remarkable. Okay. Since you guys I... didn't, since you guys didn't get clued into the, the idea, she just did it. You see... Down the hallway, like Sledgehammer, turn around the corner, look, and spot, you know, the guards. The guards look at him, and they're all, wait, what? And then he turns and runs. And so they, they like, go chasing after him. And I'm going to motion to them. All right. What the? Shion, can you defeat the lock? And you could, you could hear them yelling, like, what the hell? And, and they're, like, is, is trying still, to, you're is... reading a quarter. 
He just ran down the hall. That was me. Go. Oh. Okay. So, <laughs> going to run into the room and... You're going to have to uh, unlock it. Oh. Is, is that also electrical? Yes. Okay. 52. On an amazing. Okay. So, you fry the lock. So, you just like, zap! And there's like this big burn mark on the, you know, on the, the lock itself. Okay, so gonna kick it open and move inside. Oh, okay. So you kick it. What's your strength? Mm-hmm. Um, extraordinary. So uh, ex twenty. Yeah. Okay. So oh my gosh, she's she's way stronger than the rest of us. So so she no. so <laughs> so she she kicks the door and it doesn't do anything. Just, oh, does it go, does it open inwards or outwards? It opens or... outwards. Okay. And it, oh, and, and you to... can tell by her kick, yeah. this door is thick. Yeah, I try to grab it and then like pull it open. And your strength? My strength is incredible. Okay, uh, so you grab a hold of it, and because the electricity is out, I mean, it still has hydraulics to it or whatnot. You're thankful you don't have actual muscles. I'll put it that way. You you have synthetic ones. You're just like, you're like, oh wow, okay. And as you're pulling it, and it's still coming, and it's still coming, and it's like you can see my camera, like it's like that thick. Oh my gosh! Like it, it is a massive vault-like blast door sort I, of thing. I will help him. I have a outside of water. I have a remarkable. Oh yeah, no. I mean, you're you guys are are, are able to get it open. It's it's, it's not a problem. It's just it's the size okay. and the thickness. Yeah. Okay. I'm the winkling here. <laughs> so so you, he's just chained up to a wall. He's on an actual cage, right? No, no, no. Yeah, he's just pinned up to the wall, and he's like, "Oh, uh, I thought I ran away. I, I what was that <laughs> all about? Did he see that? No, he just heard them yell, and you know, after yeah." yeah. So while he's asking questions, I'm going to walk up, put my hand on the manacles. Okay. Try to zap them. Okay, go ahead and roll again. Four. Are we still invisible? We're still invisible, right? Yeah. I got a four. So you reach up, so electrical shock, and he's like looking up there, and he's like, uh... Okay, I'm assuming you guys are here. Whatever that was didn't help any. We are. Don't move. Can I, I, try, I try again? To go... Don't move. Can I try again? Go ahead. Have you heard about my Lord and Savior Plasma Ball? <laughs> <laughs> that was a 67 on an amazing. Okay, so you channel more electricity into the uh, uh, like into the the mechanism at this point, and you can see it like pulsating into, uh, you know, into um, sledgehammer at this point. It's like, ah, 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 and he just like pulls his, you know, his his, his arms out, sort of. Like, ah, crap. <laughs> Sorry. Do not damage our. Shoot, what's the word I'm looking for? Person that we're colleague. That's not the word I was looking for, but it'll work. Are you okay? <laughs> I didn't mean to put that much into it. I've had worse invisible person. Let's cloak him as well. Uh, do I have to roll to bring him into the cloak? Yes. Did you already have it? You already have it active at this point, so you're. That's a twenty-five. Okay. So it's the trash bag analogy again. So you're like having a difficult time gauging how to you like stretch the cloak out or you're the invisibility out. Not that you can't. It's just you're you're anxious with everything that's going on. Sorry, I'm kind of this is a new application. Uh, that's a thirty-one. <laughs> and your psyche uh, is <clears throat> twenty-six. Shoot, it's probably hurting my brain, isn't it? No, uh, your psyche. Oh. Well, your psyche is a thirty, then, correct? So arm thirty. Uh, it says twenty six. Well, we changed that the last game. Yeah, we've changed the. You're using just the basic power number. We're not using like the range of numbers in each column. It's just the basic power oh. number for each column. Remarkable. Yes, and you got a what again? Uh, uh, thirty one. 
Oh, yeah. Still not enough. Uh, somebody want to assess him? And for you can example? you can hear the you know the alarms going off in here, and he's like, uh, "So we're not waiting around in my cell. What are we doing, guys?" Nineteen. Nineteen. <laughs> do you we're know where? To... Do you know where they would have taken your equipment? Uh, uh, yeah. I mean, I can. He's still like looking around and like you know the voices in invisibility. Yeah, I, I mean, I can I can figure that out. And you can hear the guys come running back down the uh, the the hallway. Okay. Come on, come on, come on. Thirty nine. Okay. So as you uh, at this point, you you know finally envelop him in the invisibility, and those two guys come running around. And they're like, "How the hell did he get out? <laughs> he was just down the hall." And they're just like, "But he, but his cell's now open." And they're like totally confused. They go like running back down the other way. To go look around to see just what the hell's going on. Okay, let's go. Yeah. Now he can see us, right? Yeah. Okay. All right, and that is where we're going to pause for the night. Uh, now that you have gotten uh, Sledgehammer uh, into your group. And that puts us at just over uh, two and a half hours, so congrats. <gasps> Yay! So that should put the final showdown uh, for. The, that'll put the final showdown for next game. That'll be February fifth. Right. Between the this legacy a... versus blackout. Yeah, my brain is going. Okay, someone is pushing out a field that is resisting the the sleep. That's the way I my character is currently viewing it. Is someone's pushing out a field to counteract it. Ah, uh, okay. That mind you, that is his perspective. Sure. Because he hasn't come across feedback when putting people to sleep. Right. But if you're having a contest of resistance, like if two people are grappled up against each other and they're just holding hands and trying to see who bends first, that's the way he's picturing it in his brain. Yeah, no problem. So hey. next game will be February 5th. That sound good for everybody? Yes. Cool. Uh, Davy Jones, thanks for popping in again. Yep. See you next time, Davy. Yep, yep. And so you were saying what, Brittany? Um, I have a wedding reception that night, but I'm going to try and go early so that I won't be too late. Gotcha. Okay. So I might be a little bit late. Let's see what I can do. Fine. We're just going to have you flood the entire thing with radiation and kill everybody. I would prefer not to kill everybody, but I can <laughs> definitely do some flooding. P.S. I've been reading about my powers in the power manual, and I can do some cool stuff. Mm-hmm. Then do that. Do all the cool things. Do yeah, all the cool things. Do all the cool yeah. things. I'm gonna. I'm gonna try. Like, okay, uh, like I have a hard radiation control, as well as emissions. Which, um, hard radiation control means that I can um, dampen or strengthen uh, radiation uh, according to my po power. Um, Rating power rating. I, yep. can, I can change the kind of radiation. I can direct it, um, or like maybe block it, like shield it. There's so a lot. You of can do pretty much anything then if you could just change the radiation. That's yeah. Also, with my like the the section on illusion casting is like three pages long. Um, basically, it uh, it has a it mimics a lot of more specific powers. So you can basically play it off as like something more specific. Like you could have invisibility or you could have illusion of like everything, including invisibility. But like, it also gives me, um, it's, it's like a light manipulation. So, um, I get like a, um, <clears throat> like a protection against 
um, light attacks, and also like I can use it to um, to like shield things as well. So like I could do I could do like a light umbrella kind of a force shield sort of thing. Mm -hmm. A lot of interesting stuff. Okay, you should then. definitely read up on your powers. <laughs> Mine's a, a little bit simpler. Although illusions is kind of like sleep magic in Mage the Ascension. There are a lot of different ways to do stuff like that. Oh yeah, apparently I can like hypnotize people. Well, Dude. like so... heat emission, you can create a spot of heat that is contrast to the colder temperature, and I can create mirages that way. Ooh, oh, there you go, yeah. Nice. I could, if allowed or the rolls went well, I could create a heat stroke in people's heads where they just suddenly pass out because, oh my God, it's too hot. Yeah. That's nice. And their brain just shuts down because it needs to cool off. Mm -hmm. Like, a lot of the powers that I like, so far I'm liking this system because it does kind of remind me a little bit of Mage. Like, more constrictive Mage. <laughs> But mage, you can do a lot with really simple things. Just with like two dots and spheres, you can do a lot and people yeah. don't realize it. All right, so I'll go ahead and stop the stream there and we'll have the videos uploaded to um, YouTube soon. Thank you guys for all tuning in and, and saying hi. And we'll see you next time. Goodbye. Stop with that. Stop.